And I just got to thinking about the church. How bitter this whole world is. But if we could just get to the house of God and you start singing and worshiping, praising, God could do something. Amen. I appreciate you. God bless you. Looking forward to what God's going to do in His Word. Acts 2, if you have uh, your Bibles handy, and uh, you will turn with us in the Word of the Lord. Very familiar scripture. I know you have read the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38 is where we'll begin. Anybody ever heard that? I don't think you've been in Pentecost or an apostolic church if you hadn't heard that scripture. If you can stand for the reading of the Word, God bless you. And... Uh, I know that we have our families that are traveling and are uh, on vacations and traveling, and so I want to say that we, we love and miss you. We're praying for you, and I know uh, when you tune in to watch this, we just want to let you know that we're all praying for a safe trip uh, back home and everybody can be back together. The book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and look what it says in ye shall, everybody say, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise, everybody say, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort. That means to lift up, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And then they that gladly, everybody say gladly. That's, that's very important. Receive his word, were baptized. And the same day, not next week or two months down the road, but that same day, there were added to them about 3,000 souls. Wouldn't that be something? When they come back home and say, we had a nice trip, how's everything going at the church? Well, we had 3,000 new people showed up, but other than that, we're doing pretty good, you know. Whew, my Lord. And they continued steadfastly. In other words, they held on. They didn't let go. Well, that's something that needs to be done today. In the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. That's a key verse, too, because there's a lot we could preach out of that. And fear came upon every soul. You know what's lacking today is fear. They fear the, they fear the virus. They, they fear what other countries might have in their arsenal that can send off and blow us up. They fear about, you know, other things and the government and what they're going to do. And all, but they have no fear of God. And, and, and so we've got to somehow get the fear of God back and fear came upon every soul because you know what happens when you fear God? God, it says, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And so, and all that believe were together and all things common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread and house to house did eat their meat and look at there, there's that word again, with gladness. Can you say that again? Gladness. And singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I want to read one more scripture and you can be seated. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 12. If you'll turn there, the book of James chapter 1 and verse 12. It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. That word promise was mentioned several times in our passages that I read, and I'd like to preach to you today, receiving your promise. Receiving your promise. Can you say that with me? 
receiving your promise. But I want you to make it towards you. I want you to say my promise. Receiving my promise. Receiving my promise. Can you just put your hands out here this way and say, God, bless the word. Anoint the word today. God, God, anoint me. Let me just speak from your word and from the heart, God, what you've instructed me to speak and preach today. I ask this in your wonderful name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. You can be seated. I, I want to title this, Receiving My Promise. Receiving My Promise. We like receiving stuff, don't we? Well, some things. You might not like to get some things in the mail. It might be bills or it might be something that, oh, I don't want that. I know what that is. I usually get that letter, Sister Julie, in a few weeks. It'll be like, don't forget, this is when we start. You're supposed to sign in and be ready to go for the new year. I don't like to receive that. That's not something I'm looking forward to because it reminds me what's ahead, even though I know it. But there are some things that, that, that we receive, that we enjoy, um, there's exciting things that could happen that we look forward to. There are some things that we as saints of God and believers have experienced that are unforgettable. You could probably think of some things that you've experienced over the years that have been unbelievable uh, in the good, the physical, the bad, or in the spiritual sense in church. You can think of some unbelievable things. I wonder if there's anybody can raise your hand and say, that you've acknowledged and seen some things in the church that have been unbelievable that you've seen in the house of God done. I, I've seen people healed. I've seen people put crutches down. I've seen the blind eye open, amen? I've seen them in services uh, where people were delivered of something. And I've, I've seen people uh, just, uh, you know, when I pray for people that we had on the prayer request, request today, it builds my faith and knows that I know that God can heal them because I've seen other people healed by the same way. Amen. Uh, I, was, I was listening to a, a, a sermon just a few weeks ago. I mentioned it on a Wednesday night before we left uh, a few weeks ago about a young lady that uh, she, she had one leg shorter than the other and she had to wear a special shoe. She'd come up for prayer. And uh, Brother T.W. Barnes prayed for this woman. And anointed her. And the foot grew out right there at the moment that they prayed for her. She took the shoe off. And that foot was the same length as her other foot or leg. Don't tell me God is not a healer. Amen. That's why I can get up before you and I can say, Hey, I believe God can answer these prayer requests because he's no respect of a person. Amen. Somebody got their promise. Your promise is whatever you've been praying about. Your promise is whatever you need God to do for you. That's what I'm preaching about. God uh, wants to give you your promise today. But I've seen some unbelievable things. Amen. I believe that when they were assembled in the upper room, 120 disciples who had met in prayer and praise, amen, anticipated an awaited promise. Now, we know that God had already told them there was going to be a promise that was going to be sent to them. They had no idea exactly how it was going to come and how it was going to occur 40 days earlier. You think about the day of Pentecost, 40 days prior to the day of Pentecost when they were in the upper room and experienced the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. 40 days prior to that, they were just standing at the cross weeping at a Jesus that had died on a cross. A Jesus that had been toted from the cross all the way to an empty tomb which now is filled with his body that they closed the tomb, uh, the rock uh, and, and the entrance there and it was there that, uh, uh, that, that they walked away and said it's over with but there were a few that in their mind they remember Jesus said there was a promise and, and that promise is that there's going to be a resurrection but they had never experienced Jesus had always been with them and they had never experienced this amount of time without Jesus. 
Jesus was in this tomb for three days, and so it crucified their minds that it could happen. The first day, well, he said he's going to resurrect. Somebody hung on to a word that said, in three days I will rise again. I believe there had to be somebody in the crowd, and maybe it was mama that said, my baby said in three days that he was going to get up, but she was still dealing with the, with, with, with the uh, death and with the uh, overwhelming thought that her son was in there cold and a body was in a tomb. And sometimes in this cold and this dark world which we live in, we can forget the promises and the things that God said can happen, amen? And we got to watch it because if we don't, we'll think that he's not going to get up out of a tomb in three days or that he's not going to perform a miracle like the Bible says or we can't be delivered or we can't be freed from sin. But we got to cling to the words of Jesus today. Is anybody here what I'm saying today? Don't let the cares and the world and all the drama and all the bad things uh, when you walk out of a church service uh, get you down on Monday and Tuesday. Come back on Wednesday and let me tell you again that His promises are true. If you didn't do anything else today, you came here to be reminded that God's promises are true. If Jesus said, I'm going to get up in three days, I'm going to get up in three days. And it looked like the disciples themselves were about to give up, but somebody said, I think I just had an encounter with a man that seemed to be Jesus or whatever. As Mary and Martha went to the tomb, they said, Jesus has appeared. An angel has told me, Jesus has appeared, and and he's coming, he's going to appear to you. And when he did, it was like, yes, you kept your promise. If I'm not here to do anything else, I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what the world says, God keeps his promises. Can you give him a praise today, amen? Clinging to the hope of a promise that he would do what he said, what he promised. He resurrected from the dead, amen? A promise by definition means to assure someone that one will definitely do, give, or arrange something They'll undertake or declare that something will happen. Look, let me tell you something. If God said that it's going to happen and he put it in his word, it's going to happen. You need to quit asking the question why and just say when. I'm going to say it again. Quit asking the question. I don't know why this has happened. Just say, God, when are you going to answer? Amen. Praise the Lord. 120 had to wait only until the day of Pentecost, for God had chosen this day for a birth of a church. And the Holy Ghost was the gift of his birth. He said, happy birthday to me. You could even have my gift. That, that, that I'm, I'm, How many birthday parties have you ever been to where the birthday participant, the, the one you're celebrating, gives you their gift? Jesus said, we're going to have a birthday party today. Amen. I'm going to give you my gift, which is the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, amen. How about that for a birthday? The promise would mark the beginning of the new covenant. Amen. Some of you know what I'm talking about because you got this promise today, amen. A convenient, a covenant which is a purchase and sanctified by the shed of blood of Jesus Christ. They didn't know what to expect, though. I think that's what's the, the special thing about it is when they, they, they knew a promise that, I could imagine as they were sitting there uh, uh, trying to figure out, I wonder how he's going to do it. You know, have you ever done that? Wonder what, what, wonder what God. Hey, do you ever come expecting God to do something? I, I just expect God to do something special. I just expect God to do, do, do things, but he never does things the way I want him to do it. You know, I got it all figured out. God, this is the way you need to do this. You, you need to do it this way. This, but God's like, no, I'd rather do it this way. I, 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 who's going to go put mud in somebody's eye and say, okay, open your eyes, you're not going to be blind anymore. Uh, God does everything off the script. He's God. Praise God. Amen. And so they didn't know what to expect. Sometimes promises come with the unexpected. Amen. You ever had your kids walk up? Well, you promised. You promised if I did this, if I cleaned my room, you'd give me $50. Wait a minute. Brother, that don't happen, does it? $50 just to clean the room up. <laughs> I'll come clean it for you. <laughs> Praise God. No, Sam, it's not going to work. I see you looking over at Dad. 
okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I always tell mine, no, if you want to stay here and have a roof over your head, you just need to clean it for free. Praise God. I'm not even getting any amens from the parents. This is bad. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Promises come unexpected. We, we got on this one ride. The first day we get to Silver Dollar City, and there's this ride that's called Mystic Falls. It's a new ride. And it, you get on this inner tube, and you get baptized. I'm going to tell you right now. Because you get soaking wet. Well, Chloe didn't want to go. Uh-uh, that thing goes way up on, I mean, it goes on an elevator. How many feet? 60 feet up in the air. And then it just drops you, and you start going down in the water. Chloe said, I'm not doing it. And the whole time, we're like, I promise you, if Daddy rides it, you know it's not that bad. I promise you. It still didn't work. We finally talked her into doing it. Made her all these promises. We'll buy you some cotton candy, a, a funnel cake, something. I don't know. I mean, we'll do something to get you to ride it. And so it's all trying to, all, the kids, everybody's trying to get her in on it. So we get up there to the, the attendant, the young man, he's like getting on there. She said, how's this right? He said, I wouldn't get on. I don't ride this thing. This thing's crazy, man. I'm like, you're not helping, you know. We made her a promise. And so as we were going through it, and she was a little has a little concern, you know, and then we did the big drop and come down, everybody got wet, you know, we got baptized, you know, and we got out, and, and uh, she was like, I like it, let's do it again, you know. I made her a promise that it was going to be okay. Hey, if God makes you a promise that it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. Amen. God always has a plan, something better in mind. He has a new... He has a unique way of showing that only He, God, can do it. That's the problem, Sister Glenda, we're dealing with. God has His own way of showing us things. I just know God can do it. But the problem is He has His own way of, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. It's going to be this way. God has something better in mind that they didn't know about on the day of Pentecost. Something better on this side of Calvary. Amen. He said, I have the indwelling presence of my spirit that I want to put within you. I'm telling somebody today, the promise I'm talking about is the spirit of God. The spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. If you don't have that today, I'm telling you, God has got a gift for you. God's got a promise for you. Amen? And so, you can receive this promise that I'm preaching about today. This promise that they were about to receive was the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. It was the promise that Prophet Joel foretold. Isaiah identified it as a sign, and they would receive it with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Amen. And Jeremiah said it was the new covenant in which God would write his laws on the inward parts and in their hearts. Jesus, Jesus proclaimed, preached, and promised uh, to those who believed in him. Let me say that again. He proclaimed, he preached, and he promised Jesus to those who believed in him. And they received the Holy Ghost, but, they, but the experience had to wait for a crucifixion and a resurrection. Now, hear me out. I hope you can, can, can get a hold of this today. There's a promise for you. But I'm telling you, before you receive the promise, the miracle, or the need, there may have to be a death. Oh, Brother Dave, what are you talking Hang on now, before you get all flustered and out of sorts here, I'm not talking about a phys- I'm talking about a spiritual death. Before you can receive the promise that God wants to give to you, there are some things in our lives we need to crucify that God can resurrect. There's some old habits. There's some old things. There's some old frustrations, some old words. I'm telling you, I don't know. The Lord has been dealing with me some things lately about quit talking about the problem and start talking to me. We can talk about it, analyze it, research it, what everybody's saying, what everybody's doing, what everybody thinks, but I'm telling you, you're wasting time Talk to the great physician today. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you need to talk to God. Have a little talk with Jesus does. Make it right, amen. I know there's some things, and I appreciate 
people's uh, certification and the years spent in education and they become doctors and I'm not against that but I'm really sick and tired of spending more money and giving it to them and talking about things that they can do when there's a savior that says just crucified, just kill it right here, give it to me and let me resurrect it and I will give you the promises that I said I would give you. And I'm practicing, I'm trying to practice more what I'm preaching today, man. It's easy to sit there and talk about everything that's gone wrong and why did I get in this situation or why am I dealing with this or what do I need to do next? I tell you the first thing, it don't matter what it is, the very first thing you need to do is just give it to God. And God will take it from there. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Praise God. I'm here today to proclaim I'm here today to preach, and I'm here to make you a promise, but it's not off my promise. It's off God's promise. Deuteronomy 1 and 11. I've got to move quickly. Deuteronomy 1 and 11, and I do appreciate our young people today. I, I know you're in here with us today, and we're looking forward to next week you being back in uh, your situation there uh, with our uh, Go Kids. I do appreciate it. I love these young people. Thank you today for uh, being in here with us today. And understand Deuteronomy 1 11, the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he hath promised you. He's going to bless every generation that blesses him a thousand times. Acts 2 and 38, we, 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 Peter said, repent, be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Many of you received this promise years ago. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the promise is for you too. Amen. And to all that are far off, any, that's people in foreign countries, on a remote islands somewhere, people that never even heard this gospel, don't even know that there's a God. Can you believe? I was reading something the other day about some statistics that said, it's a startling statistic say that about 30% of the world don't even know that there's a God that exists. And he's saying right here that the promises is even for those that are far off. They have a promise that they don't even know about. You ought to be thankful that you've got a promise that you know about today. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Thank God for a promise. Thank God for the promise today. Amen. I, I received it. I, I, it's not just for me, but it's for anybody else. Amen. But it's for everyone. Have you received your promise today? Have you received it? Amen. He goes on to say, and with many other words did he testify, did he exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were adding to them about 3,000 souls. When we receive the promise, when we receive the gift, you're going you're gonna to be happy and glad. I, I like that right there. Because it's joyful and wonderful. We don't have a right to walk around and be sad if you got the gift, the promise on the inside. The only thing that makes me sad are those out there in this world that don't have the joy that I have and they need that joy. I walked around places and I saw people look so gloom and doom and just look so miserable. I said, God, please let me not look like that. To them, let there be a difference. Let them see your light. Let them see a change. Amen. Let, let them see an example. I don't care where you're at. Even in the places we were at, somebody would walk up. There's something different about you. Oh, I know we look different. No, it's not that. People would walk up and say, you're kind. You speak. You're nice. Let's do that. Let's do that too. Let's, it, what's it going to hurt to be nice to people? Oh, I, there, there was an elderly lady open the door. It's sad when you walk out of a building and you open the door and say, thank you so much. People don't do that anymore. I think our children, I think our, our young people need to respect their elderly more than they do today. Uh, and I'm thankful for our elderly people. Amen. Amen. 
uh, but they gladly received. Uh, uh, they said that when they received the word, they, they, they were baptized. Revival is going to take place when we can get the word out. That's why the Lord dealt with me so strong. Look, you can't drive to that place where we were at in Branson without advertisement. Well, where was that place that I thought? Oh, there it is. There's a billboard. There's a billboard. There's a billboard. There's a billboard. You go in a store, there's signs everywhere. Don't forget to check this out. Don't forget to check. Everybody's got an advertisement. And I got to thinking, God, I know we're on the map. We, we, were, we were walking through that park, and there was a, a woodcrafter, and he was, he was making a uh, uh, little... Uh, he, he's making like different states, like Missouri. I, he's shaping the state of Missouri, the shape, the boot, you know, Louisiana, Kentucky, and places. And, and he was carving them, and he was even putting the cities in there. And we said, "Oh, look at there! There's Louisiana, there's Kentucky, there's Tennessee, there's Missouri. You know, there's Mississippi. You know." We started watching. Brother Asia run back over there to it, and he peeped on there. And, and, and I said, like, "What are you doing?" He said, "I want to see if Winsboro was on the map." I said, "Was it?" He said, "Yeah, it was." Hey, look. I want people to know that Victory Apostolic Church in Winsboro, Louisiana is on the map. This is a soul-filling station, amen? This is a place where you, I want this to be a place, but it's going to take a lot of prayer. It's going to take a lot of fasting. We got to get to this place, but I would love for this to be a place, not for me, not for somebody else to brag, but for the glory of God. But this would be a great place to say, you know what? It'd be worth a 12-hour drive to go to that church because they believe I can get healed in my body. We had a friend of ours, he's passed on and gone to be with the Lord. Brother Rutledge, Brother Randall Rutledge, a dear friend of ours that lived up in I think it was Maine or Massachusetts somewhere. And uh, he was, he, he's ministered. It still exists this day. I give the Lord praise uh, that, that, that you can go on. They have online. He was online only. He didn't have a church. Well, they had a church building, but they were online all the time. You click the switch like for their lights, shunk, and all everything come up. Computers and everything, and they were online. And he was there, and he was preaching one day, and he said he had some people out. They wasn't in the churches, about six people in their church. And he said, I was sitting there. I was preaching my heart out. He said, I was just giving them all. And he said, I was sick in my body. wasn't feeling good. And he said, I, 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 I left out of the church that night, and I walked to the parking lot in my car, and I just sat there. He said, I'm a grown man. I just wept and cried. He said, because I just feel like sometimes nobody cares. Nobody's listening. Why do they want to listen to an old fat man preacher? Sitting, that's the way he said it, sitting up here trying to tell somebody how to do right and live right. He said he gets a phone call, and he said, uh, there's a man uh, that called and said, I need you to baptize my family in Jesus' name. He called a local church, and I'm not going to call the organization, but they're supposed to have the Holy Ghost and believe in baptizing in Jesus' name. But he called them, and he said, can you baptize these people? I'm going to send you the way. And he said, we don't have time. So he said, I got a plane. And he said, and I got the ticket. And he said, I spent $200, got a plane, and took time out of my day, and I flew, and I baptized them. It was another church that wouldn't even believe. I can't believe. He said, I just could not believe somebody that believes the same way would not even allow me to baptize. Well, this is our church, and we got certain rules and all. He said, I had to get another church uh, uh, to, to baptize them. Uh, that didn't even believe in the truth that, uh, that we believe. And he said, I ended up baptizing that family and two people from that church that don't even believe in Jesus' name, baptism. And he said, and I got back on the plane and he said, I flew back and he said, I felt like I was worth something. He said, I felt like I was doing something. And he said, by the time I got home, he said, I had other phone calls, other people, that church stirred up and they started watching his service and to this day, that church that he baptized them in that didn't believe in Jesus' name, baptism, is preaching the truth today. He's gone on to meet his reward and he said, I even had my plane ticket paid for three times the amount that I had when I, I took it out of my pocket and went there. Don't tell me God don't keep his promises, amen. God wants you to receive your promise today. Do you want to receive your promise? Give a praise. When people see that their life is changing, they'll desire it. They'll be glad. The Bible says they will gladly receive this word. It says in verse 41, then they that gladly received his word. You know, people don't receive the word gladly anymore. 
And when they received it gladly, they were baptized. That same there, they were adding to them 3,000 souls. I think it's our heart. I think the way we receive it affects how it's going to, what's going to happen. There's some effects. You got to believe it when you receive it too. But when people see this word, and that's why I'm so burdened. Pastor today is burdened. I've kind of taken the radio program. I've kind of taken the website. I've even talked to people, and they've discouraged me. Other ministers, oh, bless God, I don't see the need to have to do all that. Well, you might not, but I feel the need to reach the lost because I've got a father-in-law that don't go to the house of God that will tune in and watch this and get something out of it. I've got people that I work with at school that may not walk in these doors, but they're going to be listening, tune in, and hear this word. Let me tell you, there's a lost world. You don't realize who's watching and who's listening. God is going to do something, and I've got a burden to see somebody's life change. I don't think it's just one person in another state uh, that's listening. Uh, there's people all over the world. Well, how's that going to help our church? You don't know. It won't take but one millionaire to pray through and come here, and this church could change forever. We're not changing doctrine or truth. We're going to keep doing what we're doing, but God could do some things that we couldn't even imagine. Praise God. Anybody have that kind of vision? I had a preacher friend of mine said, Brother, we started praying at our church. He said, we was kind of in a financial bind and God kind of blessed us. I said, well, that's good. He said, two millionaires showed up, prayed through, got the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and our church is set for life. That sounds crazy, don't it? I'd give anything, Brother Adam, to build a little complex out there and put our elderly ladies in little apartments out here by the church and say, look, you can just walk across the pavement right there and come to church. Wouldn't that be something? I got a vision. I got to be careful because I'll start preaching about visions now. My dad always wanted that. We got that big tower and Brother Cameron's was about ready to be released from, not from your sorrows but into our sorrows and that big tower was up and my wife said your dad always wanted a prayer tower she said I believe Brother Dayton Brother Adam would probably build a big prayer tower you know he said I want to look all over I want to go up there and pray all over Franklin Parish you know hey it could happen I'm not in it to make money I'm in it to further the kingdom of God and when you do that, it's beyond our comprehension what God can do. Amen. Brother Bastin, the Lord blessed him, and they bought four lim limos and started picking up people and bringing them to church in the limo. Boy, they, boy, their congregation just, everybody wanted to ride in the limo, but look how many people got the Holy Ghost. Right. Wouldn't that be neat? Brother Mike, we're picking you up in the limo today. Just be ready. He said he just likes being simple. He might put a tuxedo on just to ride in a limo. You never know, Brother Mike. <laughs> you never know, do you? I'm talking about promises. I, I feel that the, the devil beats us down because it's like, oh, that can't happen. Who said? God can do whatever he wants to do. Praise the Lord. And they went to be baptized. They were filled with the presence of God. I appreciate new people who come and sit here on the pew and visit from time to time. But nothing is ever going to change until we get fixed at the altar. And we get baptized and filled with His promise. The church can add and build and grow when we surrender to God. Can you give the Lord another hand clap of praise? Have you received the promise today? I like that in verse 42, and I'm fixing to bring it to a close. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. When you receive the promise, you keep it. You try to keep that and be faithful. We said, continue steadfastly. Don't break your promise to God. Keep breaking bread means you keep Visiting the altars. Keep seeking after God through His Word. The bread is the Word. You keep searching for God's will. 
I, I believe it's important that we all walk out of here and we still have on our tongue the words, God, let me be in your will. There should never be a time when you walk out of a church service and in your life you say, well, you know what? I'm in the will of God. Well, we want to be in the will of God. We should be in the will of God, but I'm always seeking to be in the will of God. Let me walk in your ways. And fear came upon every soul, many wonders, signs, and apostles. By the apostles, when you receive your promise, you got to have the fear of God. There's people walking around, I don't fear anything. You need to fear God. That's the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. Hey, I fear God. The same God that brought me in this world can take me out of this world. As I was riding down a highway, and I saw all those deer, and I saw cars, and I saw things, you know, just traffic, and people, you know, you see some crazy stuff on the highway, interstate. I thought about, God, let me always be ready because we don't know when God may call us. Be ready. Fear the fact that I won't be ready and I could go and live in eternity in hell. You need that fear. Because if you don't, you won't live for God. Now, that doesn't mean you fear life and you, you, you know, all the stuff that we're dealing with in the world today. You don't need to fear that. You need to fear God. Let God be in control. God will take care of that. You need to enjoy life, but you don't need to fear those things. But you do need to fear God. Amen. It really bothers me when people want to curse and put God's name in it and say that. They don't know what they're saying. I, I think of Jesus on the cross. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And, and even people that do stupid stuff, they want to curse and, and, and do all this junk and do all manner of things. I still look at them and, and some people are like, why do people do? Because they don't have what you've got on the inside. They don't have the promise. It's for them. They just haven't obtained it yet. In verse 44, if you'll stand. And all that believed were together and had all things common. We don't have a lot of things in common. You don't want me working and building on a house. You don't want me driving an 18-wheeler. You, you don't want me uh, repairing something. So we all have differences. We all have things that maybe we can do that are maybe not in common, but the one thing we do have in common is the promise and God and His Word. That's the one thing that draws us together. Promise keepers, promise receivers. We're people of unity, people of love. We're not of the world, but we're the church of the living God. Now, verse 45 says, Brother David but Adam, it says, go sell your house, your car, your possessions. Part it with everybody. Give it to everybody. All the I've, I've heard people say, yeah, you need to go take all your stuff and just give it to people and just, just live, on your, live like Moses with your robe and sandals. Walk around the earth and just read scriptures, you know. That's not what it's talking about. But I'll tell you what it is talking about. Those things should never come first before God. Those things that we have and we own, it's God's. That's, that's, that's why it's so important that we put our perspective in the right place, our priorities in the right place. And it's important that those things that God has blessed us with, we use them, our hands, our goods, everything we can, use it for the kingdom of God. I, I, I see those advertisements, people in the entertainment world. There's all these... Elvis Presley impersonators and they have all these people that they're, at, they're advertising like singing that they, they want to make it big and, and, and have careers. Did you know God gave them that talent, that voice to praise Him? He didn't give it to it to make money off the world, be famous and be an idol and everybody want to do what they're doing. That's not God's divine purpose in that. And so they, they're to worship God. And so we're to be happy. We're to be to the church. Now, Romans 4 and 20 says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Let me tell you what Brother Abraham did when you leave out of here. I want you to leave out of here with, with Brother Abraham's uh, 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 thought. He staggered. That's Romans 4 and 20. He staggered not at the promises 
the promise of God through unbelief. There's, there's the key. God's got a promise for you, but it, it's not of any value and it's not effective if you have any unbelief. But with strong in faith, giving glory to God. If you're going to raise your hand again, if you've got something you need God to do for you in your life, you need a promise. Oh, come on. We all have something. Oh, I've got everything I need. Yeah, but there's more that God wants to give you. There's a promise. If you want to obtain that promise, you cannot have unbelief or you're going to stagger. You're going to fail. You're going to fall. Short of what God wants to give you. But it was strong in faith. You've got to be strong in the faith and you've got to give God the glory. If you want it, God's going to give it to you. Say it's mine. Help me, Lord. Do you really want it? Say it's mine. You, you take something. I guarantee if I give a big old ice in the middle over there and I, he, somebody gives it to him and I walk over and I tell you, hey, that's mine. You watch these girls. I bet you Lane and Lauren do, do that. Hey, that's mine. I saw a little bitty kid the other day. The mama went over there and said, you give, that's mine. And I was like, uh-oh, I'm fixing to experience child abuse right in central Arkansas, <laughs> Missouri, wherever I was at. That's mine. It's yours, but you got to give God the glory. Can I tell you what somebody told my dad one time? Preacher, I'm going to pay the church off. Oh, that's an awesome thing. That's a blessing. God bless you. If I win the lottery, he said, Sorry, it's not going to happen. And she said, oh, let me guess, you're against the lottery. He said, no, you're not going to win it. He said, how do you know? You can't even give tithes and offering in the church. What makes you think you're going to give the lottery? I was a little bit of kid, but I was like, woo! Preach! Think about it. God's not going to give you anything. Sister Glenda, that healing is not coming if we don't give God the glory. She's already said it, but I tell you what, I, I get I get chill bumps. I get I'm already feeling the Holy Ghost right now, thinking about that child growing up in a church service one day and giving God the praise. Let me tell you something, brother Adam. You were right. I know I'm taking a little time here, but you were right on target. When you had that accident and you was in that hospital and we drove to Shreveport and you looked at me and I don't know if you remember, but you said, when I come back to church, I'm going to give God praise. And you know what? That's why you got your healing. I wish somebody would hear me today. Whatever it is you have need of today is for the glory of God. You're going to stagger at what it is you, woo, that you want and desire and a miracle today. You're going to stagger. You're going to fail. You're going to fall. It's not going to happen if you have unbelief. But if you're not strong in faith and you don't intend to give God the glory, it's never even going to happen. But I'm here to tell the church today, I'm telling you that you can receive I'm receiving my promise. It's happening. I get my healing today. You ought to walk out of here. It's mine. I may not feel it right now, but it's my healing. It's my deliverance. It's my financial blessing. It's my promise. Why? Because the preacher just said, I didn't, and all I'm doing is repeating what God said. So don't say the preacher said it. Just say God said it. He said in Romans 4 and 20, he said, if I be strong in the faith and I give glory to God, it's mine. It's getting dangerous up here. I got to shut it down. Abraham waited many, many, many years for God to keep his promise to give Abraham a, and Sarah a son. That promise wasn't given until Abraham was more than 75 years old and wasn't fulfilled until Abraham was 100 some 25 years later. Paul wrote in the previous verse that Abraham's faith did not waver. It did not weaken. He held to the last breath. He held on to his faith even long after the hope of having a natural born son became impossible according to human experience and what doctors would think today, he held on to his promise and God granted the unbelievable. Paul writes that Abraham experienced no unbelief. Paul said, I'm happy to report that he never waited in trusting God. 
Paul said just the opposite. He grew stronger. Some people grow weaker in waiting for the promise. But he said Abraham grew stronger in waiting for the, uh, the, the promise. And he continued. Uh, some people have a problem. And this is where Brother David is preaching. I'm practicing what I'm preaching here. Here's why I have a problem. If I don't get my answer and I'm not feeling what it is that I've been praying for or I, I'm still hurting or whatever, then, then I, I don't feel like giving God the glory. But he said, Abraham said, it don't matter how you feel. It don't matter how bad it looks. It don't matter that nothing's happening. He said, I'm still going to give God the glory. So I come here to give God glory and praise for what he's about to do. Abraham's faith was undeniably remarkable. He was far from a perfect man. I knew somebody was going to probably say that. The devil's all right. Well, you're not this and you're not that. You're not perfect, you know, like Abraham. Abraham was not perfect. Oh, well, David was, a, David was not perfect. Moses was not perfect. Take everybody, go down the list. Nobody was perfect except for Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice, amen, on the cross. So you can't let the devil talk you into that one. But he believed that God spoke to him and said it's going to happen. Yeah, Sarah, you can laugh. And people around you can laugh. She got in trouble for laughing. And so guess what? God said, I'll just grant it. I'm going to give it anyway. And you'll be reminded every time you hear the laughter of that child. Even as year and year passed without the promise being fulfilled, he still held on. I guess that's what I'm trying to tell somebody today. Receive, receiving my promise is all about hanging on today. Would you lift up your hands today? I don't know what your promise is. I don't know what your need is. I don't know who's watching today that you just feel like giving up God, I'm asking that you just increase our faith. Encourage us today. God, give us what it is that we have need of today, but God, let us give you the glory first. God, I praise you. I thank you for this church. I thank you for this people. Thank you for the prayer requests. Thank you for, God, your word today, Jesus. I love you today. I give you the praise for this. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I think we ought to just praise Him just a moment. Come on, give God the glory. God, I give you glory. God, I'm praising you. God, I, I need this. God, you know what I'm going through, Lord. I'm just giving you praise for it right now because I know it's a process. God, I know it's a struggle, but God, I know that on the other side, just as it, was, it looked bad on Calvary, it looked bad in the tomb, but it was only 40 days later. Boy, they were shouting up a storm. They were shouting the Holy Ghost. The promise came down. Amen. I don't know if it's going to, I pray it's not 40 days. I pray it's not 40 months. I pray it's not 40 years. God, 40 seconds, Lord, let it, whatever your will is, God, we're going to give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Can you just wave your hands to the Lord one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, today. Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. You ever come down the road and it's like, man, I better find a gas station. I'm riding on fumes. I was trying to quit several times, Brother Adam, but I was riding on the Holy Ghost there a little bit. I had to keep going just a little bit because I feel like God's got something for somebody. I believe, look, make me, a, make me a promise. Since we're talking about promises, I believe God is going to do something this week. Preacher, how you know that? I don't know. I just feel it so strong. God's going to do something this week, but make me a promise. I want to hear about it. I want, I want you to testify. I want you to give God praise for it. Amen? I don't care what it is. I don't care if somebody gives you a, a peach or a tomato or whatever. You get blessed, whatever. Give God praise for it. Do something. Amen? Give God praise for it. I love you. I appreciate you. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord is going to do for you this week. Let's ask God's protective hand on our people that's traveling. Gas, let's ask God to just give us, Lord, God, just protection, Lord, as we journey home. Be with us, Lord. We thank you for this. We love and praise your name in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you today.